I'm just gonna hold altitude until I get to eight. I'm gonna go ahead and call up the maneuver. It looks like we got somebody at our 12 o'clock low. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is Liz Brassoff from Thrust Flight. I'm one of the chief flight instructors here, and today we're gonna show you a steep spiral maneuver and break it down. Thrust Flight here. This is Brian Huntlocker, a flight instructor, and uh... Liz Brassoff, also flight instructor. <laughs> <laughs> so we're showing off a steep spiral here. Uh, Liz, what are some use cases for this in real life outside of a check ride? Like what? Yeah, I mean, the scenario my examiner gave me on my check ride was I have an airport right there, right off the nose, and I have a medical emergency on board. He pretended to have a heart attack or maybe, you know, you've got a passenger that has a pretty urgent situation. And so I want to land at that airport. That's my closest airport, but I need to lose altitude to do that. So it's not an engine failure, but it's I need to lose altitude quickly. I love that. Now, one thing to keep in mind, like right now, I'm showing the winds about out of the southwest at 15 knots. On the ground, it's reported calm. So somewhere between where I'm at at 4,000 feet and the ground here is about 600 feet, uh, we're gonna experience a big change in wind and it's porous. So we know that from our experience with turns around a point that, hey, uh, we're gonna have to change some bank angles. We're gonna have to be doing a lot of shipping. So just remember as you're doing this maneuver, what is true for you at 4,000 feet will likely not be true as you descend down to, you know, that 1600, in this case, about a thousand feet above ground. So you have to keep that. And I believe if my memory serves me right, we've got to have this thing done uh, 1500 feet above ground level. Um, anyway, so 1000 would have been a bust. But either way, we got to get this knocked out before uh, today on our altimeter, 2100. Okay. All right, take us to school. Let's see what you can do. See how okay. <laughs> uh, so to get down quickest, I know throttle's going to be to idle. So Brian and I jumped pretty quickly into setting up for this maneuver. So let's make sure you understand what the maneuver actually looks like. The Airman Certification Standards outline that it needs to have at least three 360 degree turns. So just like the name says, a steep spiral, you're imagining kind of a spiral path down towards the ground with at least three rotations and should be full 360 degree rotations. The other piece, right, of the name is steep spiral. So if that's referring to our bank angle. We're allowed up to, but not to exceed 60 degrees bank, which I'm sure we'll mention here in the video. And so I'm manipulating bank as I come around those 360 degree turns to maintain the same radius or distance away from a specified point or a ground reference that we have in sight. So, that's what we're talking about so much with the wind here and our recovery altitude is how much I bank or how little I bank changes how quickly I can make that rotation or make the turn. And that changes uh, how much altitude it takes to make three turns, right? If I'm at 60 degrees bank the whole way around, that will take very little time to make a full 360 degree turn and hence I will lose less altitude. If I'm at 10 degrees bank as I come around that 360 degree turn, it's gonna take more time so I'll be losing more altitude because of the time spent in each rotation. So we chose a starting altitude of 4,000 feet. For us, that's about 3,500 feet AGL. Should be plenty for the aircraft we were flying that day, a Piper Archer. Your aircraft may vary. It also is gonna depend on how much wind you're contending with that day. So you wanna make sure you have a high enough starting altitude, because as Brian mentioned, we have a minimum recovery altitude of 1,500 feet AGL. You've gotta have completed three rotations by that point or else your examiner is gonna hold you to that standard and, and perhaps give you an unsatisfactory outcome. He gave that to the one that And I'm just gonna hold altitude until I get to 80 I'm gonna knots. go ahead and call up the maneuver. It looks like we got somebody at our 12 o'clock low. If you just hold your altitude, you'll be fine. They just snuck up on us with solemn when I was scanning. So as the flight instructor, you always gotta keep an eye out. And if you're in your check ride, I, I've never had this experience. I've never had a student tell me this. But if you notice something, like a, don't keep doing the maneuver, call off the maneuver. What? And tell, this, tell the DPEs like, hey, there is a, another aircraft at my one o'clock low, probably about half a mile, I'm calling it off for safety. And they're gonna, I would think, respect you for that. Okay. Um, they that's a really good call. Please don't hit that airplane during the check ride. That, that's the plan I could have done. <laughs> good. Left out, so one seven, one seven, one seven, one seven. So Brian saw another conflicting aircraft, so that's why he said I'm going to call off the maneuver. So you'll see we do a few turns here and then get reestablished in the maneuver. Uh, we're going to go ahead and verify we've done our pre-maneuver checklist, we've done our clearing turns, we've done all that good stuff, our engines and parameters, we're on the correct tank, all the good stuff is knocked out. Uh, just a friendly reminder that the air 
that we're in right now at 4,500 feet. The wind is coming at, according to our G1000 here, 16 knots out of the southwest and down on the ground right now. Calm. So we know that there's going to be a whole lot of adjustments in our bank angles as we turn around our point here uh, to make sure that we're doing it correctly. Uh, just like we know it turns around a point. No turn around a point is the same as the one you did the day before because the wind changes. And you're going to experience that all in one maneuver with the steep spiral. So we're looking to get this done. We're looking for three rotations. Uh, we're not going to exceed a 60 degree bank. Uh, Liz, in this aircraft, we're going to pitch for 80 knots. We don't want to go uh, more than plus or minus 10 on the speed. So Brian mentions we're going to fly this maneuver at 80 knots. That's the speed our school has chosen to standardize all of our instructors on. There's not a specified airspeed in the Airman Certification Standards. It does say you need to designate an airspeed and hold it within 10 knots, plus or minus. But it doesn't say it must be best glide or it must be, you know, this other reference speed. Uh, we chose 80 knots. It's slightly above best glide speed in this aircraft to give ourselves cushion between an accelerated stall speed because we can bank up to 60 degrees, right? That's pulling roughly two Gs, which would increase my stall speed. Uh, I didn't want to be down at best glide for that maneuver because of that increase in stall speed. So you'll find an, a speed that works good for your airplane. I'm sure your instructor already has one in mind, but that's why he's mentioning that airspeed here. It's just a, the speed our school has designated to provide ourselves an increased cushion from that accelerated stall speed. And uh, we want to stay over our point because uh, like you said, that's a perfectly great place to land and we want to stay over it. So uh, why lose that? So babe, I think we're set up and we're good to go. Okay. Area is clear. Run, okay. for Nim. I'll call the turn on the idle, because I know that's going to help. They just have the quickest, so we'll have you coach me through the rest of it. Here. All right, go ahead and pull the idle. Let's go ahead and put her in a bank. Do you have your point? Do you have your point? Okay, we've got kind of this so, field right plus. All right. All right. All right. Hold. You can do whatever bank angle you want, but, Clear. you know, right now, if you think about it, the wind is pushing you towards the north. And you see, you're kind of getting pushed towards your plane. We're going to one eight. Five out there. Go ahead, you go, Clear. We're traffic to all the way one up. And now we're picking up that tailwind. We're picking up a 330 beard. I can look at my ground speed. It's showing 101 knots. It's kind of a little hack for you. Let's get traffic. I have to do eight. So the 11 to the south will be on the arc. Thanks. Wow. Well, kind of favorite. Starting to head into the wind. Our ground speed's about 90. And your airspeed really hasn't changed on the tape. So Brian mentioned the winds before we began the maneuver. It was a fairly light wind day, so if you can see in the video on that outside camera view, there's not a ton of variation on my bank angle. It's definitely shallower as we're approaching the upwind on each rotation uh, and slightly steeper on the downwind. On a higher wind day, like let's say we're contending with 30 knots of wind when we were doing the first couple of rotations when we're up at altitude, that would require a lot more adjusting with the bank. So it's just gonna depend on how strong your wind is. How much variation am I getting in ground speed on each rotation? So how much would it require a change in the bank angle? The other thing we haven't articulated yet in the video is that every time I change bank angle, I have to change my pitch. And I'm using trim a lot to help with that because I have such a small margin. I only have 10 knots to the plus or minus from the designated airspeed. So when I increase the bank, usually it's starting to pull the nose down with it. And so I'm applying back pressure to keep us from accelerating. I want to hold an airspeed, not change my airspeed. Uh, as I decrease the bank, it's easy to lose airspeed because it's kind of leveling off my descent as well. And so I need to decrease the back pressure or even apply some forward pressure if needed to hold that airspeed constant. So I'm adjusting pitch every time I'm adjusting bank, which requires a lot of focus and division of attention. That's two things to manage, as well as maintaining a consistent distance around my ground reference point. So my eyes are moving pretty quickly here. Division of attention is definitely something practiced and improved by doing this maneuver multiple times. Okay, good, go ahead and clear that throttle for me. Well, we don't really worry about it a whole lot in Texas, but we don't want to shock cool the engine for our friends that are in more cold environments. We're going down really fast. We're cramming a bunch of air onto the engine. It's going to cool up really quickly, so we want to make sure that we don't turn a pretend descent to like a <laughs> real emergency. Yeah. Looking good. Have we got to up to keep it right? Very nice. Very nice. So, Ryan, let's clear that in. Yeah, clear it. So right now it is, I get really focused on bank and focused on my point. How are you keeping track of when it made a full rotation? Ah, well, I use a lot of ground reference maneuvers, uh, excuse me, ground reference points. I've lined up with a specific bridge on the lake 
that is pointed directly southwest. Um, again, we can also do uh, a heading bug. That's an invaluable. Uh, that's probably what we should do as well. So as I'm coming around, I'm paying attention to these degrees, and we'll do it. And well, I think we're done here. Ride is in bed. Dodge. Downer. Let's see, 600 feet to spare. It could be airport at 4,500. So that's 18. Nice. Right. Well, I think you cannot talk to you. I'm a good job, Liz. I was impressed. We're dropping. That's good. So Brian mentions there we have 600 feet to spare. What he means is that minimum recovery altitude of 1,500 feet AGL. I've recovered or completed my three rotations even 600 feet higher than that. So we know we picked a nice conservative starting altitude that gave us enough room to finish all those rotations. I was also able to apply a fairly steep bank. For most of the maneuver, we were around 45 degrees bank, slightly less on the upwind, slightly more on the downwind. And that allowed us to make those rotations fairly quickly, which minimized how much altitude we lost as well. So that is something really important to be watching. The other note is he called out clearing the engine on each rotation. That's absolutely part of the test standards and what the examiner would be expecting you to do. So once I reach a full 360 degree turn, I want to clear the engine. So let's talk about what that means. He talked about managing the heat of the engine. We pulled the power to idle. We're descending rapidly. There's a lot of air coming in, cooling the engine down. Clearing the engine allows it to maintain some of that heat. It also allows us to make sure the engine would return, that this is not turned into an actual emergency scenario. So in most training aircraft, that includes increasing your RPMs or your throttle lever up to maybe 65% power. Perhaps your instructor is gonna ask for full power, but typically we do about 65% power for a couple of seconds, let's say a three count, one, two, three, pull it back to idle and continue on the maneuver. That's all we're doing is making sure the engine would return, helping preserve the heat a little bit as we fly it around and complying with the airman certification standards, which requires clearing the engine on each rotation. Here at the end, after I finished that last 360 degree turn, instead of clearing the engine, we added power back to a cruise level and performed our cruise checklist. The maneuver is completed. So unless your examiner specifically asks for it to be combined with another maneuver, we often have examiners in our area combine it with a power off landing, like the power off 180 degree landing or an emergency approach to landing, then this is the point to conclude it. So follow your examiner's instructions there. Well, that about wraps up today's video on the steep spiral maneuver. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.